Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So I've been working on setting up the shop still. I know, every time I do a project, the benches are collect all. And then I barely get to use my awesome space. So you guys might notice there's some stuff up here. We have a bag full of high and low shifter parts for a, uh, a Trail Boss or a KV-75. And then you got some covers... Some different type style covers and what have you. So we got a, we got a whole bunch of stuff, um, parts and stuff and pieces. I got two engines, and um, one particular is the Trail Boss 100 or KV100 um, motor sitting here, and then down bottom I just have a regular five speed, um, nothing fancy. It's just a regular five speed. Just like we used G4s or G3s, whatever, I'm not really sure. I uh, haven't really got that far into them. So, I got two engines right here that are dead to me. Junk. Don't need them. Don't want them. What do you do with them? I'm going to show you guys what you do with them. And then, of course, I have this beautiful specimen here. It is a nice G5. Points ignition. This is for uh, like a like a 90s, um, what do you call it there? KE100 5-speed. Shift one down neutral, two, three, four, five, and up. So we have this beautiful motor right here that's going to be going on the 1987 KE100 that we're going to be doing all the electrical on. So this is going to be built for that. Um, I was going through a whole bunch of stuff and noticed that I had these two still and I haven't made a decision on what I'm going to do with them. And then I figured I'd do a video on showing you guys mechanics. Yes, real Hardcore mechanics. What is hardcore mechanics? What's that all about? So a lot of times we just spend wrenches. We spin wrenches and working on a straight up KE100 engine. Boom. We're going to fix this engine. We do a ton of that on the show. Nothing really fancy. Okay. We do a ton of these. A ton of them. I don't really work on these because I'm not really into that older bike. I have one out back. And uh, it's a great bike, don't get me wrong, not dissing them at all. However, I have so many parts for the regular KE, I really don't do anything with these. So, and I'm not going to do anything with them other than that engine right there is going to be converted over to CDI. Oh, did I just say CDI? Yes, I did. So, I've been asked upon request, multiple people have asked me, Kevin, I have an older motor how do I make it CDI or 12 volt conversion? We're going to make one on that system right there and do the wiring on it, but we're not doing that tonight. Tonight we're doing hardcore mechanics. We're going to tear apart that engine. Why are we tearing apart this engine? This engine right here. Oh, let me get you guys in the stand. But before I do, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. So when I post the video, you get it. I personally like to do things that nobody's done before or nobody wants to do or nobody takes the time to do or anything like that, which is why you guys love my channel. So as the GT, the go-to guy, we're going to disembarrel, disinfect, disinterpret, disin everything on this engine right here. Why this G4? Because this G4 has the provisions for the high and low range. We're going to strip this engine down, and we're going to find out what the difference between the G4 and the G5 is, and will this work on a G5, okay? So, let's get crack a lacquer. So, let me get a, a bit, get my trusty Milwaukee. Now, I am not sponsored by Milwaukee at all. And I use their products on the channel a lot. And I'm always bragging about how awesome they are. Guys, this is the cat's meow. Okay. It's a Milwaukee fuel. It's got a little fuel LEDs ID. You see them light up on the handle. And I'm using a uh, Phelps number 3 bit. Okay. This thing is just awesome. This is a nice cover. This is not going back on this motor. Okay, so 
find out what's holding this bad boy on there. Make sure it doesn't look like anything, really. Get that out of there. I know a lot of people ask, Kevin, where did you get your parts from? Okay, I see one difference already. This shifter shaft. Shifter shaft. Right here. Get you guys up here. The shifter shaft right there is smaller diameter. And, well, let's just take a, a regular, uh, whatchamacallit there, shifter. Out of the box of shifters. Take a look. That looks all right. I bet you the diameter, we might have to bore that out. These are what we look for. These are clues to the puzzle. Okay. I'm removing the high and low shifter cable because it's literally right in the way. And it was wrapped around the engine. I don't even know if it's any good. Don't care. Okay. Get that off like that. And then let me get a little mallet and we can tap that off there. I want to take be very careful taking things apart. But I also want to show you this. So this, this gearbox right here for the high and low. All the pieces are in the bag right now. And I did a video using this engine before showing you guys how to assemble that. So there is videos on my channel. At the time, I wasn't aware that the KV75, oh, I'm sorry, the KV100 had the same gearbox, but it's the same thing. So you could check that video out. Um, I'm just using a rubber mallet, nothing really, just a, a small little craftsman. And uh, so I could tap on it. And, uh,. Separate this thing. Okay. So we have the side cover. Now what we're going to do is, before we take go and spend our time, wasting our time, to see if this will even work on here, we're going to take this and we're going to try it on a, um, on a side cover. So the first step we're going to do here is check out and see if the G5... And the G4 have the same bolt pattern and, and everything is in the same place. So some of the stuff that you'll see on this is, well, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. And I'll show you how I came up with this idea. Okay. So what you're looking at right now is the bolt pattern. Okay, so you have a bolt here. And it's in the same spot on that one. Next one down there, it's in the same spot. Okay, you can see where I'm going with this. All the bolt patterns are in the exact spot. This one has dowel pins. So, what we'll have to do is we'll have to take these dowel pins out, drill out the, K, the uh, KV, I'm sorry, the KE100 engine, but that's not a big deal. That's easy enough to do, guys. Okay? Which I, I can do that on video. I mean, that's not a big deal at all. But everything you can see looks exactly the same. Even the shaft. I thought the shaft was a little thinner, but it's not. So let's um let's see if it'll fit on there, huh? Because if that's the case, if it fits on and everything looks good, then we proceed to take that one apart. And taking that one apart is going to be awesome. Okay, so here's the G5 engine right here. We're going to shift, put the shifter through. Oh, shifter fit right through. Yeah, guys, that looks like it's going to work. <laughs> that looks like it's going to work just fine. All right, so we got some stuff to do, guys. We're going to take apart the G4 engine. We're going to take apart the G4 engine, take the shaft out, take the transmission out. We don't care about the engine part. The engine is dead to us. We don't care about that. We just want the transmission and uh, to get all that. So we're going to take... So we, now we know that that side cover that has the high and low will fit on this engine. That's what I'm talking about. 
This is what gets me up in the morning. This is what gets the juices flowing. Looking at something going, hey, that looks like it would work. So now I'm, I'm teaching you guys how I am. So now we're going to take out the shaft and all the other stuff from the other transmission. So let's get crack a lacking. And yes, that's a broil pan you see in front of you. All right, so now slide the cylinder off. The piston's already been removed out of this motor. That's how I got it. Um, this motor was junk when I got it, so nothing lost, nothing gained. Sprocket looks like it needs to be replaced, but that's all right. We don't even care about that right now. I have another one. Shaft looks great. And you can see the seal. So we have to um, confirm that the seal... And then as I'm going to go, I'm going to confirm things look kind of like they'll work, okay? So you got this big shaft over here, and you're saying to yourself, the KE doesn't have a shaft like that. No, it doesn't. However, ooh, that's going to sound good on your speakers. Okay. Another engine that's more torn apart. And then I'm going to strip this part down. And you notice how it's got that little, that ring. Okay, I'm going to pull that off real quick. Get a pair of pliers. Okay, there's your spacer that goes right there. Happens to be the same diameter as the shaft. Same exact diameter. So see where I'm going with this? I'm getting some good, good tips and, and hints, and I think this is going to work. All right, so now we're going to start pulling apart. This is a Duralast kit sold by AutoZone. I am a professional mechanic. I have thousands of dollars worth of tools. Thousands. This socket set is absolutely awesome and a must-have. And I use it for everything. Everything is color-coded, so you get your red... For your metric, your blue for your standard, and it's got shallow and deep. It's not missing, jumping around on any numbers. Comes with a ratchet and two different extensions. I love this kit. Highly recommended kit over at AutoZone. Get over there and get it. That kit is like 50 bucks. Can't go wrong with that. Using my quarter inch drive Milwaukee. I use different guns for different purposes, you know. I don't care where the bolt pattern is. I don't care the order because I'm just tearing this thing apart. You know what I mean? We're just going to split the case. So this engine's not going back together, even if this doesn't work out. Let's see if the bolt's there. Another thing about the Milwaukee is it keeps the head of the bolts looking like brand new. When you use the Phillips number three. And no, these were not previously taken out. It's just that this gun is that good. Okay. Make sure I get all the bolts out. And it looks like I do. Oh, nope. Missing one right there. Look at that. See right there? Don't forget your bolts, guys. Okay. Alright. 
separating cases can be a pain in the neck. Um, normally, I would do be very careful with them. But considering I'm not really caring about this case at all, period, I'm not, I'm not going to be gentle with it. Okay? Not even for the video, because I, I, if this, like I said, if this doesn't go back together, I don't really care. You know what I mean? So. And. So we'll take off the clutch side as well. Um, only because it's got a good oil pump, good clutch parts, and all that happy stuff. But, and I like the bolts. Okay. Like I said, I'm not being gingerly with it. I'm just hacking it, if you will. Some of you guys at home are going, oh my god, I gotta get one of those guns. Yeah, it's a good gun to get. It's definitely a good gun. Now, this one's too far in for me to get. So I'm going to grab a, uh, this top one here is too far in for me to get, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a bigger bit. Okay. All right. Got a couple that are stripped. Not that big of a deal. All right, so Kevin, what do you do about strip bolts? I'll show you. I'll show you guys how I take them out. Let's wipe my hands real quick. That would be that one's a bear. Sometimes you get these stubborn ones that are really just in there. Don't give up. Because you will get it. And that's how it's done. Okay. Press the tone change. Okay. Clutch covers off. That's all that is. I literally don't care about any of this stuff. None of it. Okay. So we're going to rotate this thing around back to where we were. And now all the bolts are out of the crankcase. Now we got to separate it. 
I was like, oh, that's not how you separate a case. You are absolutely correct. That is not how you separate a case. I'm trying to break the gasket free. Okay. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay. So I used a plethora of chisels to stretch the case, which I did. And now we're going to finish it off and get this thing apart. And there, my friends, is the transmission. Right there. Now, this one right here, this shifter pattern on this one is different from the one that we're driving. This one has um, all the way down is neutral. So, it's a little different. But, once again, we don't care. We don't care. So, we have to... Pull this all apart and take a look at it. Of course, we got to take some stuff off the other side first. But you can see. Five gear show. All right. And then we'll pull that apart on the other side. Okay. So for monkeying around on this side, we're done for over here. We got to get on this side. And there's these two screws for the keepers and then the clutch basket and all that stuff. All that happy jazz. So let's see if we can get that out. There's a clip inside there and then this whole clutch piece pops out. And then we'll take off those two screws right there. Alright, got my little snap ring pliers. You can see the whole thing just release itself. Clutch and basket. Don't care about any of that. Obsolete. Okay. Then we have this. And then the shifter shaft will come out. Well, short, I should say. There's the shifter shaft. Rip that right out of there. Just tearing it like a Slim Jim, you know? Okay, get this out of the way. And then get back on with the drill. And that's the retainer right there. Take the spring out for the kickstarter. And then there's the keeper right there that holds that drum in. And now you're going to be able to pop through. keeper in this someplace there is there's one more keeper one more keeper right there let's see if you guys can pull you up so let's get that out of there like i said i'm really not trying on this one i'm just kind of hacking it apart you know what i mean because we don't care we just want to save what's good we're going to change the shifting pattern to what we want which i will be doing a um i'll show you that because this one's all the way down as neutral. And we're going to change that. Okay. That retainer is out. There we go. Now it'll come through. Okay. And we're going to end up with a transmission. Okay. Oh, look at that, guys. Look at that. It's the gear from the other side. Like that. Okay. All right. So we got the shifter, the gears, and everything right out of this motor. Okay. So now we got the gear shifters all out. Here is the drum. Here is the input shaft with all of its gears here is the output shaft 
with all of its gears. And then we have right here, this is a G5 that's all been stripped down. Not the ones you've seen. I've got plenty of cases, but you can see right here. It's a G5, okay? What we're concerned about is if that will fit through, um, if the shaft will fit, if the shaft will work, um, or am I going to have to replace that bearing? So that's a question. Um, is the um, shifters, uh, uh, is the gears going to work? Is there the same amount of gears? Is... Um, the diameter is the same, all that type of stuff. So those are the different things that we're going to have to check. So right now, we're going to do the most important part. Because without this part, it can't go any further, right? So for right now, we're going to check the output shaft. And see if this output shaft will go through the G5 case. Okay, the G5 will not go through. So... What do we have to do? So we're going to have to take the um, bearings off and see if the bearing housing is the same. All right. So I just drove out the gears. The seals are definitely different. And the bearings are different. So this is the bearing right here from the, um, what do you call it there? The trail boss. And then this is the bearing from the KE. And you can see how small it is. However... There is plenty of meat to bore this out. So, what I'm going to do, if it looks to me like the two cases, the two halves, right here. I'm going to get you guys a better look at this in a second. Okay, I'm going to do a, a, an up and down comparison to the two, if I can get them to stay up there. See if you guys can see that or not. They are identical. So the only difference is, is this diameter here, which has plenty of meat to be bored out. And then this one right here is the actual one. So what I think I need to do is take this case to the machine shop and have them bore that out to fit that other bearing. And I should be all right should be set and then the the um, high and low will fit in this uh, this case it's funny guys that is how you learn what will work and what won't work is by trial and error so we're gonna build this this case not maybe not this one because it's got some boogers on it, you know boogered up but um, well that could be cleaned up but I might just clean that up might just send this one out I got another one actually it's better this case is beat up I have another case I'm gonna use and I'll send it out and have it machined. You're probably looking at under a hundred bucks to get that board out to the proper size. They don't have to, um, you know, they'll just take measurements from the other case, transfer them over to here, set it up in their lathe, they'll spin it, and then boom, cut it. And then I'll have them do the same thing with the seals so that this um, G5 is going to take the seal and the bearing for the output shaft as the, uh, what do you call it there, the G4. I'm also looking to take a look at the um, the bearings, the bushings, which appear to be the same diameter. Um, they are easily swapped. Everything is in the same exact spot. So there's really nothing that I have to really worry about other than that. The depth of here to here is the same. The case is basically it's the same transmission it's just in the wrong body you feel what i'm saying so um we're going to do that and then we'll use the drum from the g5 onto the g4 and change the shift and pattern for where neutral is other than that should be all set so there you guys have it that's how you figure out what will work and what will not work we're going to have to do some more measurements, of course, and go from there. I have a lot of parts to uh, clean up now and to inspect. I think this is going to be a really cool, crazy build. And uh, it's basically the same thing as the G5. Um, I, yeah, the G4 is basically the same as the G5, slightly different. Um, most of the um, differences are exterior. Um, 
And not only is that going to be cool, but the fact that we're going to have a G5 10 speed is going to be awesome. High and low, and that might find its way onto the KE-102 build um, once we do one of the halves. I've got so many engines, so many things, uh, so many parts kicking around that I really um, don't need to do that. So um, this is the part we're going to use for mocking up. Sorry about that. And then we have, of course, the transmission. We'll have to uh, inspect all of it, check it all out. We have the high and low. We've got the input shaft here. And then, of course, that one. So we're going to pull the other transmission out and match them up. All right. And the final part of this whole mess is checking out to see if what's different and what is um, the same. Let me get you guys over here into position here for a second. There we go. Uh, a little better. And then we'll blow you guys up. Okay, so right here, you can see the G5. This is the G5 um, output shaft and gears, gear set. And then right here, you have your KV100 or your Trail Boss um, 100 gear set. Okay, so we're going to compare those two first. And one of the first things we're going to compare is the diameter here. And to that one, so I'm just going to butt them together just to do a quick reference. Feel it? They are the same. Okay? So, we know that this set of gears will fit right into it. Okay? Now we're going to con uh, we're gonna check and make sure we got the same amount of gears. Because don't forget, there was, was four-speed transmissions. There was uh, all kinds of them. So, let's just check, take a look here and see where we're at. Okay? So, we're going to close all the gears together. And you can see that all the gears are the same, in fact. Okay? Same ratios, same gears. Okay? And if it's inside there like that, and uh, which is why I thought I was missing a gear. And then, of course, you can see how they shift. All right. So we have, right here, we have a G5 and a G4 with the same gears, same ratios. Okay? We're good there. And then we pull it back like this. We can see that the retainer is in the same spot, right like that. One uses a clip, one just has the banks. Those are the same. So, with that done, let's check out the input shafts. So, here is the, um, the G4 one, and here is the G5. Now, you'll notice that the gear is missing. The gear was missing because this gear right here slides right off the end. You see, it'll slide right onto this one right here and work the same, okay? It'll lock right in. So, we'll take that gear off because we know what's missing on the other shaft. And then 